Tisov shoots it, deflected, right in. Peter Angelo save, rebound. Stasty stopped by Peter Angelo. I don't believe that save. Give it to Peter Stasty. He can't believe the save that Peter Angelo just made on him as Frankie Sparkly. Now that maneuver there to stop and rob Peter Stasty. He should get 5 to 10 for that. Oh. Hello and welcome to episode 32 of Tendy Talk, presented by the BLPA Podcast Network. This week is a bit of a BLPA podcast crossover as I chat with Trish Dangle of the BLPA Big Show. In this episode, Trish and I talk about picking up goaltending later in life, the BLPA, and BLPA draft experience tournaments. So without further ado, let's go to the conversation. Trish, thanks for joining me. It's uh, fun to have you on the podcast, uh, especially since you're on the BLPA's other show as well. It's a nice little crossover tonight. Yeah, I'm excited to be on the show. I like I, I listen and like try to get as much information as I can get because I'm a newbie goalie. So I'm like, oh yeah, let's get all this info and try to maybe pick up some information along the way. Yeah, and you know, I, I think that's been some of the fun conversations I've had is you know, talking to other beer leaguers, you know, obviously I've had some other folks on who uh, have more skill than I would uh, ever dream of having, but uh, <laughs> talking to the other beer leaguers, hearing, you know, their insight of, you know, what do they do to get better? How did, uh, you know, two episodes ago, talking to a fellow who picked up the game later on in life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so that, that was interesting too, because he didn't have the goalie coaching as a young kid, like, you know, me or other goalies have. So, yeah, but that's kind of what I'm dealing with too. Cause I, I've played hockey all my life, but I've played defense all my life. I've never put on pads until a few years ago. And even then I was like a few and far between, and I don't have a coach to, to teach me anything. So just kind of by the seat of my pants, trying to figure it out. Well, before we even get to you putting on the pads, mm-hmm. let's start with uh, what I'll, I'll say the elephant in the room. How, does a Canadian born person wind up in Chicago? Like of all the places to go, why did you A, move to the States and B, pick Chicago? I ask myself every day, question A, <laughs> especially in these kinds of times. But um, I, I mean, the short answer is work. Mm-hmm. I followed um, a passion of mine to work for, I mean, summer camp of all things out in California. Um, and then here's an even bigger mistake. We expanded to Chicago and I thought that sounds better than California to me right now. <laughs> and uh, came over to Chicago and just kind of got stuck here with, uh, with work and everything. And it's closer to home for me. So all my family is just outside of Niagara Falls in Canada. So being here, it's a nine hour drive versus having to take a flight from California over to see them. Yep. Yeah. And it, it leads to foods a heck of a lot better too, especially the pizza. <laughs> the pizza for sure, but it depends on what you like for food. There's a lot of good stuff. I was in the Bay area, so there's a ton of great food up there. I mean, I was, it's not cheap to live, but. I was so excited to see Dave Portnoy finally made it to Vito and Nitz because that was the uh, joint I went to as a kid growing up. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that shared all over Facebook by everybody here. And I was like, oh, yeah, point of pride. Everybody's excited about it. Yep. You know, he went to a couple other places. I mean, he had the one with the live carjacking, but Vito and Nick's is like that. That's the place to go, especially on the south side. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I hear about the most. I haven't had it yet, but I have been told many, many times that I should go and try it. My uh, brother-in-law was a prison guard. And uh, he used to do uh, prisoner transports and he had to go into Chicago and he was staying right by Midway and he goes, where, where should I go eat? And I, I told him, this is where you got to go, but make sure you bring cash because it's a cash only joint. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he sent me a picture from the bar. He's like, this place, even before the food came, it's awesome. The pizza, even better. I was like, I, I know you'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, a Chicagoan does not hand out recommendations for food lightly. So. No, no, <laughs> especially when it comes to pizza and Italian beef. Yes, exactly. You're going to trust somebody from the city when, when yeah, you're telling you where to go. Everybody you has their Italian beef place. You know, the, the fail safe is always going to be Portillo's, but mm-hmm. everybody's got their little neighborhood joint. Mine is Pops, which was literally right out the uh, back gate across the alley. And back in the <laughs> wintertime, uh, they, they would. Uh, plow all of their snow in the back corner of their parking lot them and Popeyes and me and my, the neighbor kid would build a little shoot in the snow pile to sled right down into the the alley 
<laughs> that's perfect. Yes. See, that's the kind of stuff you can't get in California. You need the, that like Chicago winter. Yeah, you, you do. And uh, I'm sure that that's one of the things that a lot of people go California to Chicago. Eh, but you're probably like, yeah, I, I need a little bit of winter. Yeah, I grew up in Canada. I need the snow. I miss it too much. Yeah. So you, <laughs> growing up in Canada, it's obvious why you got how and why you got into hockey, but uh, mm-hmm. how old were you and why did you decide defense? Um, so I, we were all, I'm the youngest of four. We were all on skates pretty much as soon as we could walk. Cause my mom grew up playing hockey and she was in a big hockey family. So we had no choice really <laughs> other than to start. So my sister and I did start off playing ringette, which is not big here in the States, but it is uh, pretty big where I'm from. Well, not so much anymore. Hockey's really taken over, but it was relatively big sport when I was growing up. So we did a little bit of that. And then my sister switched over to hockey. And because I wanted to do everything like my sister, I switched <laughs> over to hockey, uh, but mom played defense. So my sister played defense and then I played defense and now my niece and nephew both play defense as well. So it just runs in the family. Have you noticed uh, you play defense a little bit better since you've, or not better, but differently since you've put the pads on, you know, maybe picking up that back door a little bit more and stuff like that? I like to say that I was, I mean, I would like to say that I was always <laughs> doing that and doing a pretty good job of that. But I think now I'm more neurotic about like what the goalie is seeing. I, I think I bl- I still block a lot of shots, but I think I try to block them less uh, because I know that if that puck, if that goes off my skate, is going to come in at an angle that that goalie is not going to expect. So I'm a little more mindful of that um, and just try to push people outside more than anything. And like, if that goalie can cover the post, I'm going to push them outside because I know that's going to be way easier for them. So definitely more mindful. I don't think I've changed my playing style, but I've eased up on a few things and <laughs> I'm just more in my head than I ever have been. On the offensive side, do you notice yourself shooting more when you can't see the goalie? Because whenever I skate up, that's the thing. If I can't see the goalie, I let that puck go. Yeah, definitely. I (laughs) always have been like a very stay-at-home defenseman. So anytime I hit the blue line, I'm panicking and looking for a reason to get rid of the puck. So (laughs) if I have a couple of guys in the lane, I'm going to try and fire it around them and hope that the goalie doesn't see it. They always do because my shot's so slow. So (laughs) that doesn't usually get through. But yeah, definitely always trying to shoot when the goalie can't see. Yeah, instead of ringing the boards, trying to put it on net at least. And yeah. Hey, if I can get a tip in, that's assists are way better than goals in my book. Yeah, it, it's crazy <laughs> in beer league how the standard offensive play is get it down into the corner and then sit there, make too many moves till you I either lose the puck and it goes the other way, or B try and pass it out in front in front of everybody and mm-hmm. just send it clear across to the other side of the boards. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> every, I, every team I play for or sub in for, that seems to be the standard offensive tactic. Yeah, definitely. I think most of my teams, it's like skated across the blue line, turn towards the boards and then get the puck taken away from you. That's yep. really like the big I, thing. I always laugh when, you know, the team's pinned down in the corner both defense are just wide open, easy pass mm-hmm. up to them. And they're like, nope, I'm, I'm going to wait till there's something out front or try and skate up yeah. behind and lose it. It's like, all right, hey, th- this is cool. We're, we're just out here for beer anyway. <laughs> yeah, I try to call for the puck too. And I'll give my guys shit too. If I'm like, hey, I'm hanging out at the blue line and nobody's there. Try and pass the puck. Like I know I'm going to miss it probably 50% yeah. of the time, but just try. Um, but yeah, I'll give them shit for that. Cause I'm like, hey, I can maybe let a shot off once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, you know, or at least move it over to the other side, you know, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Uh, So at some point, you decided, hey, defense isn't fun. Uh, I'm going to (laughs) put the pads on. Uh, Why did that happen? Uh, I don't know if it was because defense isn't fun because it's definitely still like my bread and butter. That's what I love to do. But I have been playing it for so long. (laughs) (laughs) I've been playing it for so long. I thought like, all right, it might be fun to mix it up and might give me a different perspective to help improve Mm -hmm. my game. Not that there's anywhere for me to go at this point, but for personal, just help me improve my game. Um, And I had a couple of friends that were doing it and I was like, oh, well, you know. I'll borrow pads and and give it a shot. So I helped out at an adult class. I was like borrowing my friend's pads that were too big for me. And uh, after that, I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of fun and a new skill that I I think I want to pick up and probably the most expensive position I could have tried to pick up. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it was, and then of course I started telling people, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to try and play goalie. Like, yeah, that makes sense. Cause you're a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. You, you yeah. talk about being expensive. My dad always said, you know, when I was growing up playing, he's like, why couldn't you have stuck with soccer? I, I, <laughs> I would have bought you brand new shoes every year, top of the line shin guards, and you would have been set. And it was like, dad, I stopped playing soccer in kindergarten. So <laughs> give it up. You know, and he's like, I know, but still it would have been a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. The checkbook would have been a lot happier. Yeah. We All were, the- we, we played softball as well in our family. So it was, you know, softball in the summer, hockey in the yep. winter. Um, so we did have the cheaper quote unquote sport going on too. But I think thankfully my mom knew what was, ha- what kind of came with hockey. So she was yeah. prepared for it. And because there were so many kids in our family, hand-me-downs were a big thing. So everything got saved and used. Yep. Yeah, I my kids are still my kids don't play competitively. They just play pond hockey on the backyard mm-hmm. rink. But uh, we haven't had to buy them anything other than sticks because of older nieces and nephews that play. We just keep getting they're the last of the line, so they get all the hand me downs. <laughs> That's perfect. That's all you need. That's a and it's a habit that I mean I keep that habit. So I love getting used gear. Yeah. All my goalie gear is used. I'm like, I'm not going to go out and buy brand new stuff. I don't even know what I'm looking at half the time. So I, I used to shovel snow to save money to buy equipment when I was, Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I haven't bought equipment since freshman year of college. Uh, So my stuff's still 21. It's, I shouldn't say still, but it's 21 (laughs) years old now. So so, some might think I picked it up used, but no, I bought that stuff brand new at Jerry's. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just it's well loved yes yes it's seen a lot of rubber that's for sure mm-hmm. but you're uh, saving up for a new set now right th- that is the plan yes mm-hmm. um in fact i've, I've had preliminary discussions with a, a vaughn rep of uh what i would like to do so awesome. get, get are you rocking vaughn's now yep i got some old vaughn legacies uh essentially what eddie balfour was wearing when he won the stanley cup in nice. Dallas. that that's awesome I think completely underrated bullseye graphic. Um, <laughs> and the the uh, legacy T4000 trapper that is probably the largest glove ever made. So when when I do finally get a new glove, I'll probably let everything in glove side because I'm used to just a thing that's this big. It's huge. Uh, catch a beach ball with that. Oh, easily. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it goes back to my... Um, youth goalie clinic sort of the coach always said have that glove open because if, if, when it's open it takes up more net you never know what you're going to catch and so many times I just have it out there and <laughs> you know I, I can't see anything and it, I just feel the the snag of the puck and I just close it and hold on yep it's like the kid <laughs> at baseball that just closes their eyes and as soon as they feel it snap it shut yep like that scene from uh Sandlot when he's like just put the glove out there I'll take care of the rest <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I wish it worked for me like that but my gloves I mean so I I played like I said I played softball growing up too and I was a third baseman so my gloves pretty good and yep. so I assumed getting in net I'd have a pretty stellar glove side uh that's not correct <laughs> the, <laughs> because the glove feels so different for whatever reason I just like I'm still working on that yeah. So how, how often do you get a chance to put the pads on? Um, roughly once a week now, which is nice. I, I mm-hmm. play net for a women's clinic, so I, I get some shots there, which is really good. In a game setting, um, I try to get to pick up when I can, but uh, the teams I actually skate out for, I, they're not super high level, but they're too high level for me to hop in net for and feel yep. good about myself. So um, I'm sure they'd be gracious enough to invite me to do that, but I uh, I wouldn't feel good about my performance there. But I, I get to daytime route whenever I can if I if I have time. Um, but most of the time, it's just the women's clinics or subbing for the rec league uh, at my rink. So I'll get at least one skate in a week. My yeah. advice is don't shy away from those upper level opportunities because I have found when I skate down I play worse when you skate Mm -hmm. up and I've had this conversation with a number of other goalies here locally when we skate up things just happen as we figure they should so it Mm -hmm. almost becomes easier it's kind of like that that one time pass higher up you slide over you can be down in the butterfly ready for it when you're skating up because that's what they're they know they should be shooting those right. le- lower levels are like, well, I didn't catch it. I'm going to send it back. Then I'm going to send it back again. <laughs> and we're going to turn it over and go the other way. And I'm going to do all this movement for nothing. So don't shy away from those 
uh, upper level opportunities there. You'd be surprised what they'll do for your game. Um, you bring up rat hockey too. And I, I've learned that that is a term unique to Chicago and everybody's like, well, why rat hockey? You know, um, it, it's simple. The, the old term rink rats and you go for open oh, wow. hockey and it's rat hockey. Um, I, that actually, I had not put that together yet. So <laughs> you just learned me something right now, which is great. Yeah. yeah that's something now I, I picked that up really quickly when I moved here. And now I can't shake it. So anytime I go home and ask yep. about rat hockey, people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, when I was in high school, uh, I went to Brother Rice on the South Side. And the first Thursday of every month, we got had a half day. So a family friend of ours who actually got me into hockey, he'd pick me up from school. He'd have my equipment in the truck already. And we go play rat hockey at Southwest Ice Arena. And nine out of 10 times, we're the only two people there. So it was a great, great opportunity for me to, you know, work on stuff. Uh, but when I was in college, I started going to Johnny's Ice House midday rat hockey. And I don't know if it still is, but that was the best rat hockey in the city at the time. I don't get into the city proper to go to that. But I, I mean, I know the caliber of hockey at Johnny's overall is yep. higher than most of the ranks in the area. Yeah. I mean, even for playing goalie, we had, you know, you had to get to rat hockey at least 40 minutes early because they only took three and if you weren't on that list you weren't getting on the ice and so luckily for me my dad's uh, firehouse was right across the street so I would get there early you know sometimes grab breakfast and then go over to the rink and uh, so I, I was always there when I was home on break and yeah the, the caliber was great we had father Murray a retired navy chaplain he was like 72 years old he would skate with us. He wasn't great, but everybody kind of gave him his space. And the, the old joke was don't go into the corners with father Murray. Cause you'll walk out of the rink and get struck down by lightning. Um, I love that. Yeah. He had some great, great jokes that can't be repeated. Uh, <laughs> I could only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Especially being a, a retired Navy chaplain. Yeah. Um, he's heard some things, but th then there were some, you know, a couple guys that played European hockey, Billy Zito, mm -hmm. the, GM for Florida now he was out there skating with us back when he was a player rep and uh in fact it was the one summer he had a couple of his uh NHL players coming out with us for a while and they're like this is a good for us so they, they got the ice before us and yeah they, I, I think it was the second week they had that ice I'm coming off the ice and uh Joe Corvo comes up to me and goes, Hey, uh, we need a goalie tomorrow. You want to skate? I was like, yeah, I'll get up early and come in. <laughs> so I, I then spent the rest of the summer skating with those guys. And that was a lot of fun and fun for my dad. because he was able to come over and watch me skate with those guys and at least see me stop an NHL breakaway. Yeah. That's, I mean, even if you can say you've done it once, that's yep. plenty. <laughs> yeah. And I had the bruises to show I was skating with those guys too. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. So this, the clinic that I, I attend for um, every week that it's run by a former NHLer and he, he rips shots at me sometimes when I'm not paying attention, which like I have a habit of kind of going off with the fairy yeah. once in a while. And my gear's not the best. Like I'm, I'm a smaller person. So it's like, I've got an intermediate chest protector, like, you know, my glove and blocker also mm -hmm. smaller and not super protective. So when he fires shots at me, I I'm like, I kind of wince a little bit. And the, and he asked me one day, he's like, are you scared of the puck? I was like, no, I'm not scared of the puck. I am scared of the puck coming off of your stick though. <laughs> he's like, well, I haven't killed anybody. I was like, I don't want to be the first one though. So yeah. Okay. You know, it's funny you say that because one, th that is something I think is slowly starting to be addressed is that female goaltenders are smaller than NHL goaltenders where some teams won't even look at a goalie. that's not six, two which means I'd never have a shot with them, you know? So you're almost bound to have to use that intermediate equipment, which isn't made for the caliber of play that you're sometimes playing, which I, I think is a, a real shame. In fact, my own Rayung has talked about when she was, you know, skating with Tampa and how she had to piece things together for mm -hmm. that same reason. It's, it's, it's a shame that it's taken this long for equipment manufacturers to kind of, go, Hey, we should probably do something for these smaller, you know, ladies, uh, because mm -hmm. it, it, there's a need. Uh, but at the yeah. same time, I remember, you know, some of the equipment I grew up playing in, 
you know, it would never pass even at the youth levels today. I, I, <laughs> I've told the story before. My first pair of association equipment was brown leather pads. And, you know, I had the waffle board and the first baseman looking uh, catcher from the 70s. And yeah, <laughs> chest, chest protector is maybe that thick. So you felt the puck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think goalies of my vintage, I'll say, have better <laughs> hands because that we wanted to catch the puck or deflect it away with the blocker rather than catch it in our stomach like goalies do today because that hurt. We, we, yeah. we did develop a little bit of a fear of the puck. And I, I've had that conversation with Ron Tugnut and Kelly Rudy, and there was something to having that slight fear of the puck that I think made us better. Uh, that yeah. is interesting with young kids today. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I don't know, maybe I, I don't, as a defense, as a defenseman, I block a lot of shots because I'm yeah. not smart and can't break <laughs> the habit. So I'm used to, you know, having player gear on and blocking yep. those shots. So I think I, I went into net thinking I would not be scared of the puck, but then I did get my first stinger and was like, oh, okay, this is a little different for some reason. Yeah, it, it feels different in goal equipment that does forward equipment for some odd reason, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I think part of that is in goal, you're still square to the puck where when you're playing defense, we're, you're taught how to block without being square to the puck. So it's right. You know, but yeah. Uh, what's been the um, hardest thing to pick up as you've transitioned to goalie? Ooh, probably. Ooh anything any side to side movement really yeah. like I can get up and down not a big deal like my my butterfly is not clean by any means it's not wide but it's okay but moving side to side I am a disaster I will more <laughs> likely flop over than I will try and like make a slide happen because in the moment I'm just like thinking too much and can't do it yeah so that's probably been the hardest thing what what's uh, surprised you the most Ooh that a headshot doesn't hurt as bad as I thought it would. <laughs> Cause I, uh, one of the first times that I went out, I was playing in net for like a, a friend's skate and one of the guys ripped a shot right at my head on purpose. He was like, Hey, now you're not going to be scared of the puck anymore. I was like, yep. I wasn't, but I guess now I'm not scared of getting hit in the head. And, uh, yeah, I don't, and my helmet's not that great either, but I was like, yeah, all right. That's not that bad. What, what kind of helmet do you have? I couldn't even tell you it's some sort of bow it's not the death trap bower okay uh, but it's <laughs> it is a an old bower I got my first set of gear off of craigslist from somebody that just decided they weren't playing anymore and I was like yeah whatever you have it's probably good enough for yeah. the shots that I'm gonna take that that is exactly why I was wondering what kind of helmet you had because I know <laughs> chip from the totally offsides podcast used to have one of those widow makers until yeah. she had one custom made because she's small and has a small head, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I try and tell parents of young goalies, if you don't get your kid brand new pads, get them a brand new mask. That's the mm -hmm. most important piece of equipment they can get, you know, that and the nut mm -hmm. cup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about that as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is nice. But yeah, the helmet is, the mask is the thing that I was like, yeah, that's something eventually if I'm going to if I'm going to keep playing more, which I, I'd like to, uh, I, that's one thing I'm going to invest some money in for sure. Like leg pads. I don't know that I'll ever get a brand new set of leg pads. Right. I'm not, I'm not super picky with that. I'm not trying to match my team or anything. I'm, you know, not stylistically aligned. So, but a mask, I like my brain. So I'd love to yep. make sure it stays intact. Well, I've got my high school mask over this shoulder my college mask over that shoulder and I was wearing that one up until about two years ago but I've had a number of concussions that's an old heat and coho mask and it, it was good but it was a little big I had gotten like said a few concussions with it and so finally I said nope I'm gonna invest in a mask did my homework and got a mm -hmm. uh, nice power NME8 you know because it was kind of could I have gone better yes but that was kind of like the the nice soft spot for the level I'm playing at and the protection I needed. So it's like, all right, yeah. Yeah, now, now I have a mask that fits properly and I've, <laughs> I've taken a few headshots and I haven't felt them. Uh, That's whereas, important. That's good. <laughs> with those helmets, I did feel them where it was kind of get, like getting punched in the face, but mm -hmm. you know, okay, I can live with that. 
Um, I, I grew up on the south side. It, it wasn't the first time. <laughs> but I was gonna uh, say that's a very goalie thing to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I I grew up on the south side. It, it, it just it happens. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, you get a good mask, and you don't. But you're right. You don't feel those shots like you, you would expect. Mm -hmm. um, so. You play some uh, beer league hockey. You play goalie part time. Um, mm -hmm. How far did you go in your competitive days? Was it just you know kind of recreational hockey through youth hockey and maybe high school or? Yeah, so competitive. Any sort of competitive was probably a little generous, but um, so <laughs> I played a little bit of travel hockey when I was younger, and then I played for my high school team. Uh, but you know, hockey was too expensive for me to to play outside of that, so. We yeah, kind of called it quits after high school and I played pickup after that. Uh, yep. and that was really it. So I got the, my travel days done with nice and early while everybody was still young and my parents weren't tired of, tired of traveling yet and would still put up with that. And then just played house league in high school. Yep. You know, I, I wish more areas had house league hockey. Mm -hmm. um, if, if there was house league hockey here in Minnesota, my son would be playing. Um, I, I think this whole idea of everything must be travel has driven a lot of people away from the sport that come back in the beer leagues and they're like, no, I always wanted to play, but mm -hmm. we didn't have the time or st stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that's such a huge disservice to girls specifically yep. because, you know, where, where I grew up, there was full house leagues for, for girls. There's travel teams for girls. There's everything that you would expect for boys was the same for girls. So uh, there wasn't a need for girls to be playing on boys teams they could but there was no need for that um so here coming here and seeing like there's one high school girls team but it's made up of three different high schools because that's the interest level or yeah. there's no girls playing at x level because they'd have to play with the boys and they're starting to hit and they don't want to be involved in that yeah there's i i'm surprised that girls hockey in chicago has taken so long to kind of pick up especially with the the run the Blackhawks had. I know the association I played for, St. Jude, had a few girls in it when mm -hmm. I was coming up. Uh, now they do have their own girls program, and I think they're yeah. probably one of the bigger, better ones uh, mm -hmm. because of that. They, they were an early adapter, but you know, it's it's always going to be a numbers game. They're not going to have the house league if they don't have enough teams. But yeah, you know, it's it's kind of the chicken or the egg. You need those house leagues to attract those girls too. Yeah. It's interesting though because the the women's hockey around here is thriving. Yep, there a lot of rinks have women, like small women's mixer leagues, and uh, there's I'm on the board for the women's central hockey league, and there's a lot of teams in in that league in the Chicagoland area. Um, tons of like women's only pickup going on here and there, so it's interesting to see that there are a ton of women getting into hockey later in life now because their kids are playing or you know yep. they have grown up watching the Blackhawks and have always wanted to play and now there's an outlet for them because there are a lot of beginner women's programs that they can join yeah ho hopefully that trickles down you know to the youth levels um because mm -hmm. there there's a lot of opportunity <laughs> in the city uh, yeah definitely especially a... with Kendall Coyne having a bigger presence on on the Blackhawks now absolutely I, I know she's really pushing for that which, which is great and um Great move by the Blackhawks because A, she's a great coach and, you know, mm -hmm. obviously a fantastic skater. So bringing her in yeah. for that, <laughs> for that capacity. But e even um, as a Blackhawks fan, uh, I've got mixed emotions about John McDonough. Um, a, because we went to the same college and I ran into him a couple of times while there. Um, and he brought the Stanley Cup back there each time they won it. But he did a lot for you know, the marketing effort and the public relations side of the Blackhawks. And I think Kendall Coyne is an extension of that. They brought her in knowing it would be good for PR, but then they were like, well, it's more than PR. She's a heck of a coach, can be good for player development. And you're, you're seeing that in other, mm -hmm. other NHL teams too are picking up on that and hiring female coaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of phenomenal women out there playing hockey right now that would be amazing additions that were part of the national team and everything so i'd be interested to see more organizations pick them up especially now the pwhpa is partnering with more nhl teams so mm -hmm. hoping that that kind of spurs a little bit more um any exposure for 
the awesome women playing hockey out there right now is amazing. Now that the Blackhawks have closed their deal to uh, purchase the Ice Hogs, I'm waiting for them to announce some kind of association with women's hockey too. It, it just feels like the, the next step for them. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see though. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep my fingers crossed. When we yeah. <laughs> so you start playing hockey, you become a goalie, you're playing in the beer leagues. And then all of a sudden you're on the BLPA big show. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have an idea of how you became co-host because Nick, Nick put out the, uh, um, call on the Facebook group. And in fact, that's, I had already had my podcast and that's when he and I started discussing, you know, I don't have the time because I have my own podcast already and mm -hmm. kids of my own that have their own activities like Boy Scouts and baseball and all of that. Mm -hmm. But um, that's when we started discuss discussing getting me in on the podcast network. Mm -hmm. um, what made you respond to that call to arms and be like, yeah, I, I can do this. <laughs> It's funny because I didn't respond to that actually. Oh, really? I had, yeah, I had seen it and I was like, uh, I feel like I have, I usually have opinions and some things to say, but I'm not handsome enough to be on that show because he <laughs> did say that you had to be handsome. Uh, but I Which just, is I'm, funny because I mean, let's admit it. He's, he's no looker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he listens to this and hears that. <laughs> That's, that, that's why I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> he would beg to differ. But uh, yeah, I, I saw it kind of was like, oh, interesting, but not for me. So I I didn't even think twice about it. But then um, I joined the, the BLPA Discord and was helping. I had messaged Nick to help him with something. And we got to talking and he was like, hey, have you ever wanted to be on a podcast? I was like, no. <laughs> but <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And uh, essentially asked me to just kind of give it a try and see Yep. If there was any on-air chemistry, um, I enjoyed it. And I was like, well, yeah, I can give it a shot and see how that goes. Um, and I did and kind of enjoyed it and enjoyed getting roasted by all the BLPA <laughs> people. And uh, and yeah, just kind of kept going with it. And now, now I'm a part of the show and it's been really fun and an interesting experience. Because like I said, I all I do outside of work really is play hockey. Yeah. Uh, so I have experience in beer league and I, not even just hockey, do softball as well um, in the adult leagues. And so getting to talk about the thing that I do all the time is, is great. Now you talk about still playing adult league softball, being in Chicago, are you playing real softball or what we call wussy softball yeah no real softball i've been asked to play wussy softball mush ball or whatever they call no, it no no no. that that's real softball Six that's not real soft i'm so sorry yeah, no we're, we disagree on this one <laughs> you you don't wear a glove you just catch with your bare hand that but it's a giant ball i can't i can't get behind that when i saw that i was like this makes no sense to me i grew have, up have you ever with a glove taken... on my hand have you ever taken the line drive off of the bare hand though with the 16 inch? Those things are. It's I've done that with a 12 inch and I can't imagine it would hurt more with the 16. Before uh, my parents started having kids, my dad would play softball three, four nights a week. And he said uh, he usually had one or two dislocated fingers at a time and he mm -hmm. always taped them together. So he basically just had three. <laughs> That, that was his summer was just having hands like this, um, <laughs> which was interesting because he was also a fireman. So it was like, well, how did you do your job with hands like that? He's like, eh, you, you may do. <laughs> <laughs> Firefighters are tough. They, uh, they make, make things work. Yeah. yeah no, I, I could never get behind that. I, I don't know. I think it's just because I, I grew up playing like 12 inch, 14 inch at like when you're younger, you play 14 and then you move down to 12. And I think, I'm just too in love with that. And yeah. I like having a glove on my hand. Something about that just feels right. I don't think I could ever make the switch. When I was a kid, we were in uh, Columbus, Ohio, visiting my aunt and she was a nurse and they were having their uh, hospital picnic and there's a softball game going on and it was 16 inch. And somebody came over and asked my dad if he would play, they need another person. He's like, yeah, sure. So he goes running over to the field and all of a sudden somebody tosses him a glove. He goes, Oh, I thought, I thought we were playing 16 inch and they go, we are. And he's like, what's the glove for then? And they're like, well, oh, the play He's like, no. And so he throws it aside and they were just in awe. Like, what are you doing? You, you're catching that bare hand. He's like, that's 16 inch softball. That's how this works. 
Yeah. It's dangerous kickball. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's fun, especially when you've got a few beverages in you too. I mean, that's one of the ways to play the game. Yeah, that's uh, part of the adult game in general, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. So back to um, the podcast, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you talk about Nick and I, I pick on him a little bit because I've talked to him too. <laughs> For as much as uh, people pick on him on the uh, boards and on Facebook and everything, he, he's a pretty good guy. Um, I was about to call him a dude because he calls everybody a dude. Uh, yep. <laughs> but he, he's a pretty good guy. He's got some cool stuff going on. Um, and, and, you know, as everybody knows, he picked up the game later in life, but uh, mm -hmm. he loves the game and there's no denying that. And he just likes yeah. to get people together that uh, love the game. And I apologize for keep looking at my watch. My kids keep going in and out of the house. So I get <laughs> ring notifications on it. Um, oh, I get the same thing. <laughs> but uh, what, you know, I, I know it got you to a draft experience tournament uh, recently. Mm -hmm. What was that like, you know, for somebody who's just really played beer leagues lately, what was the draft experience like? Um, I, so I went to two in a row, which was a lot, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad I did because the first one was so much fun. I, I, I've always played team tournaments my whole life, mm -hmm. high school hockey tournaments, this and that. It's, I've never even before I met Nick heard, or, you know, joined the BLPA, heard about a draft tournament, had no idea mm -hmm. what that was about. Um, and it was really a unique and super fun experience. Like I was you know, you kind of get, I got a little bit of the, the last kid picked in gym class nerves <laughs> um, and also like a slow chugger. So I was a little bit nervous um, for anybody listening that doesn't know in your draft round, you chug a beer to be, you know, whoever chugs fastest gets to pick next or gets to pick first in the next round. Well, um, and to be and, fair, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a beer for those that, uh, right have gone dry there is a non-alcoholic option yeah you can so. chug ginger ale instead yeah uh, totally acceptable so uh yeah i was i was like oh some no one's gonna want to pick me and nobody <laughs> knows who i am and i'm gonna be the slowest chugger up there and it's gonna be awful uh but I got lubricated enough before the draft round that uh, I didn't really care uh, I did get picked last in my round but I didn't take offense to that. It was totally fine. <laughs> um, and I did not come last in the beer chug. So all was well, but ended up with a super fun group of guys and girls. Um, we had hands down the best goalie in the, in the tournament. She was phenomenal. Um, but I, it was just a bunch of like-minded people. Everyone was there to have fun. So mm -hmm. you don't walk into the locker room and feel like somebody's judging you for not being the best player on the bench or like you're going to go out there and no one's going to pass you because they don't know you like everybody's making a friend there in the locker room maybe yep. you have skated at that rink before maybe you're from out of town uh but you're just there to have fun so someone brought a speaker and like was pumping the jams and getting everyone going and so the next weekend for the next draft tournament i made sure to pack a speaker because i was like if nobody else does it i gotta be the one <laughs> yep <laughs> so it's just it's a whole weekend of fun partying and hockey like everybody is there just to have fun party and play hockey and no yeah. one really cares who wins or loses if you win awesome if you lose whatever you still got to play hockey and make some new friends and one thing that um is very obvious about these draft experience tournaments is your liver's going to hate you by the time the weekend's mm -hmm. over <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely your uber bill is going to be kind of high and your liver is not going to be your friend yeah um, and you should pack a lot of gatorade for for saturday morning <laughs> <laughs> so what is the overall skill level of the different draft experiences now i understand it's going to maybe vary from city to city mm -hmm. but in general is you know is it like an a league is it a c league what would you compare it to i would say it, it would end up being about a C league where, you know, the teams are, there's a couple new skaters on the team. There's mostly people that are average and then a couple ringers. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively middle of the road. Yeah. And I, I haven't done one of the uh, tournaments yet. In fact, when Nick was with his old company uh, that they were coming to Minnesota and mm -hmm. I wanted to play, but I was already scheduled to play in the uh, Soda Sick Hockey Classic that weekend. 
but at the same rink. So Nick and I were excited, we're like, <laughs> oh, you know, we'll hang out together, we'll drink beers. Um, but then stuff went down and he didn't make that trip. Uh, but I, mm -hmm. I popped over, watched some of the games. Uh, but the interesting thing was the tournament I was playing in, somewhat similar. It wasn't a draft experience uh, in that, you know, we all showed up and picked teams. It was mm -hmm. more of an auto-generated teams. You sign oh, up, okay. uh, you know, and you could say, hey, my buddy's going to be in the tournament too. We'd like to be on a team, but it wasn't guaranteed. Um, mm -hmm. And the best part was it was all to raise money for the Hendrickson Foundation, which here in the Twin Cities, um, they do a lot for disabled hockey. With, so the veteran hockey teams, blind hockey, sled hockey. So uh, oh, that's awesome. We, we knew we were there for uh, a good cause. Uh, Mick Golden Light donated uh, enough beer. So every team got a case of beer after every game in the locker room. Nice. Uh, so that, that helps. Um, but yeah, so that, that's a, just a fantastic tournament. It's like, I'm mm -hmm. playing in this one. I'm not, not telling uh, those guys no, because I played, I played in it both years. I've had it. Last year mm -hmm. it got canceled. I'll come back this year. I'll play again. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Nick and, like I said, Nick and I were trying to figure out a way. Well, maybe I can sneak into one of the games because <laughs> they did need a goalie leading up to that weekend. And uh, but they wound up finding one. But it's like, all right, how how can we make this work? I'm I'm yeah. going to be in the same same building. I can run over. We tweak the pads. schedule. <laughs> Yeah, which it's a good thing I didn't have to fill in for them that weekend because I, I had my league played at the same rank as well, and we had a Sunday night game, so I think I wound up playing five games in three days. Uh, yeah, so that, I, that does a toll. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and my league game was the last one of the weekend, and I wound up uh, spraining my MCL that night. So <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad news. Yeah, it, at least it was at the end of the weekend and not the start of the weekend. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh. yeah. So you've listened. I'm being mindful of time, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, which you were very mindful of time this this week on the BLPA Big Show, uh, <laughs> keep, keeping Nick on task. Um, as you know, I, I like to end each episode with. Mm -hmm or, you know, number of rapid fire questions. So mm -hmm. the first one is what's the craziest coaching moment from your playing days? Oh, this is going to be so disappointing because I don't think I've really had many crazy coaching moments. We had a coach, uh, one, our high school coach, he used to yell at specific players just to score as if he could, if he just yelled at them loud enough, they would score uh, on command. And that was Probably. Other than that, are my mom yelling at me in like managers pitch <laughs> softball to not pick up like gravel or like dandelions from the field. <laughs> but yeah, nothing like too wild. Yeah, it's when you say I coached my son's uh, baseball team in fourth grade, and I spent more time telling one kid to turn around and look at the batter. <laughs> Because he, he would just, he should have been a goalie because he was always just kind of looking at the outfield, looking at the sky <laughs> and like dancing while doing mm -hmm. it. It's like, turn around, watch the play. Like th there were times where I was scared he was going to get hit by the ball. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite all-time goalie mask? Um, I, okay. So I haven't, not being a goalie myself all my life, didn't yep. pay a ton of attention to, to goalie masks until recently. And Robin Leonard, a uh, big fan of him as a yep. goaltender, he had a mask for the Hawks that was like kind of sketched out. Yes. Um, and I really like, I'm not a big fan of like super obnoxious masks, but because it was in like a sketch style, uh, I really liked that one. I thought it was really cool. Yep. That was a Dave art design. Um, and I, I think that was a really cool mask. Um, there was just something about that design that I think fit Leonard's personality in the way he's mm -hmm. been very open about his mental health struggles. There was just something about that design that it it embodied, you know, what he was being honest about. I, I don't know what it was. Yeah, but... and it felt it felt humble. Yeah, and I liked that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Now he's got some cool pads and masks in Vegas now as, as much as I hate to see yeah. him there uh but <laughs> hey Kevin Kevin Lincoln has been a pleasant surprise for the Hawks too this year um, yeah 
I don't, I don't follow the Hawks too. I mean, I should, I'm here. I should, but I, I'm stuck in the Sabres fandom, unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, and that's uh, the goaltending over there right now is not as strong as we all wish it would be. You will appreciate this story being a Sabres fan. So when Doug Gilmore played for the Blackhawks, his family had just bought a uh, Newfoundland puppy. And then he was traded to Buffalo. And my mom and dad, we had a Newfoundland before who had passed away. My mom and dad wanted another one. They saw us had in the paper. Uh, husband's been transferred for work. Need to, mm-hmm. don't want to move with a puppy. So mm-hmm. they're like, all right. They answered the ad and they go over to the house to look at the puppy. And, uh, you know, my dad's looking at a family photo on the wall and it's on the ice. No jerseys or anything, but it's on the ice. And he's not putting yeah. two and two together. And, um <laughs> My dad goes, you know, well, where, where is your husband transferred to? Buffalo. Oh, okay. You know, what does he do? And she goes, well, he's a center. And he's like, a center? She goes, yeah, he plays for the Buffalo Sabres. He's Doug Gilmore. And they're like, oh, my God. So then they get talking. So I'm in college at that time. They're talking mm-hmm. how I play and all of this. And they wound up getting the dog. And because he was a black dog, they renamed him Puck. Oh, that's so, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was a good good pup uh, for the number of years they had him, but it was just kind of one of those random you answer ad in the paper and here okay, it is. Now you have Doug Gilmore's dog. Yeah, it, it, it was funny. Um, so what is your favorite rink that you've played at? Um, we talked about this on our podcast too, and I, I gave such a sentimental answer because that's really it. I don't think, I mean, I've played uh, I played at Marine Midland when it was Marine Midland. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a really cool experience, but I, I really like playing this tiny rink back home called the Hag Bowl. It was right across the street from where my dad worked. So we could go like see him yep. you know, if we weren't playing and got bored of like watching our siblings play. <laughs> we could walk across the street and say hi, if he was on break. Um, and it's just, I have so many memories of playing there and running around that rink as a kid that like when I think of a hometown rink that's what pops into my head and I feel like if I skated there now I would probably hate it I'm sure the ice is garbage and like I would be so bratty about it now but it gives me a lot of really like warm fuzzy feelings when I think about that rink that's how I feel about a few of them in Chicago as well Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Southwest Ice Arena because that's where I Mm -hmm. learned to skate at Marie Bannerman's learned to skate and my number of my high school games were there and then Oakland Ice Arena because I worked there in high school and we had half of our high school games were our home games were there too and mm-hmm. uh, of course Johnny's because of the rat hockey fun I had <laughs> oh yeah definitely <laughs> so I, I gotta ask being in Chicago what's your favorite rink in Chicago Ooh, I haven't played it at all of them <laughs> um, <laughs> that'd be hard <laughs> I've played it quite a few because the women's in the women's league, there's a lot of like, they're yeah. spread out at, at a lot of the different rinks. Um, I really like skating at Watts, the outdoor rink in Glencoe okay. uh, in the winter. It's a ton of fun to skate out there. And they're, I mean, considering the shoddy winters we've had, they, they keep the ice in really good condition out there. Um, and then again, another sentimental answer, love skating at the Crystal Lake ice house, um, suburbs girl. And yeah, uh, they, I just, that rink feels like home to me as well. Johnny's is a really cool experience though. Yeah. Like something about Johnny's feels a little legendary when you walk in and, and getting to skate there is pretty cool, but probably, yeah. unfortunately, I think my favorite place to skate out here is the, the Crystal Lake Ice House. That is, uh, I think it was there that my last high school game that I dressed for was played. Um, oh, Wow. Yeah. Uh, and Johnny's, the original Johnny's was a Johnny's East I hear is going to be closing when they sell the building, which is a bummer. Yeah. It can't be used as a hockey rink. It's part of the, the sale agreement. Yeah. I, I was talking to somebody about that. I was like, how does that happen? And the, the family that owns Johnny's East also owns Johnny's West. And when mm-hmm. the Hawks built fifth third, they lost a lot of business. So they're trying to uh, keep some of at least keep the one rank full and busy is like, all right, that makes sense. But Johnny's East is just, it's got some stories. Yeah. I mean, it's got that that (laughs) diner across the street and yeah, it's, it's a sad, sad one to lose. That's yeah. That was, 
when the news came out about that, everybody was a little up in arms and everybody had something to say about it. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I, I get the business side of it. Um, but at the same time, there's ways around it. Yeah. You or, know. you know, there's somebody that would love to take it over, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, they, they could have very easily said, you know, that they can't because do the Blues still play out of there? Or, you know, so, some of the youth teams used to play out of there. They could just say something like, you know, no youth team right. or something like, you know, because th- that that's where rinks make their money is when they have mm-hmm. teams and associations play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'll go for red hockey when I come back to town with my equipment. That's for sure. There's plenty of places for you to play. Oh, don't yeah. worry about that. <laughs> oh yeah. I I'm sure. Um, so what's your favorite stick that you've ever used? Normally I say goalie stick, but you, you've played defense most of your life. Uh, what's your favorite stick? Yeah. Another uninteresting answer. I don't really have one. Um, so my goalie <laughs> sticks, right. So I have two goalie sticks that I've had for the entirety of the time that I've been playing. Um, one's like a wooden Reebok stick that I sh- probably shouldn't even be using. It's too short for me for sure. And the other one's a composite bower of some sort and it's fine. It's light. It's appropriately sized. And <laughs> it does the job. Yeah. Uh, I don't know any different to, to try and like go scout out my own stick yet. Um, and then in terms of skating out, I've always just enjoyed whatever is given to me or whatever I can find. So yep. I, I, re- I have an affinity for warrior sticks. The warrior coverts are, are fun. Um, and I've liked them probably the most out of, out of any stick I've used so far. Yep. Those, those are very popular in my team's locker room. Mm-hmm. Um, has, uh, Nick tried to get you a, a uh, arsenal stick yet? Cause I, <laughs> No, we haven't had that conversation yet. <laughs> Did they have any of the Elevate sticks at the uh, tournaments to try out? No, we didn't have anything to try out at the, I mean, we didn't have anything at the, the Dex tournament. Yeah. Um, and then I think we had sticks to give away at the the bash, the team tournament that we just did. Um, but I didn't even, didn't even see them. <laughs> so uh, Andy from uh, Hockey Arsenal, he sponsors one of the teams at that Soda Sick Hockey Classic and plays mm-hmm. in it. So I, I know him a uh, decent enough. In fact, he's going to be on a uh, future podcast. Yes. And um, the first year that they had that elevate, elevated stick out there and we're mm-hmm. playing them. And uh, one of my teammates is looking at him and she's like, is that stick broken? What's going on? Because <laughs> like, it wasn't even out to market yet. It was like the first time anybody was seeing it. We're like, what is that? Um, but I, I've been to a few tournaments where he's there with his, uh, arsenal sticks. And, uh, I, I'm, if I were skating out, I, I'd be a fan of them because they're a lot cheaper than the uh, other composite sticks. That's really like the thing that I look at. Like I, I'm not a good enough player to really be nitpicky about the, the details and specs of my stick. Most of yep. them are going to feel the same to me. So as long as the price is right and it's not going to break on me really quickly, like all the Bauer sticks I've had have started breaking on me really quick. Yep. So if it's durable and cheap, that's fine. I don't care if it weighs like 0. 0.3 grams more than yep. the other you know, stick. It's funny, uh, two, three years ago, I was at the Let's Play Hockey Expo with my nephew who was at the time playing high school hockey. And we stopped at the booth and like he was skeptical, but he's looking at the sticks and he was just kind of like, how much are these? And I told him, he's like, and he wanted a certain kind of flex. And I asked Andy, he was like, do you guys got this flex? He's like, no, that's our next model coming out. He's like, but when it comes now that that particular nephew is not playing anymore, but it was like, I, I was surprised because he was a kid. He, I, I'll say uh, like Nick is a uh, brand horror with his gloves. My yep. nephew is a brand horror with his sticks. They had to be, you know, certain names, but he was looking at this mm-hmm. and he's like, well, if I got to pay for six myself, I mean, it, this, is, <laughs> this is a lot better. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the tipping point in your hockey life is when you have to start paying for things. And Absolutely. Your taste, your taste can change. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Everything doesn't have to match or be brand new every year. Yeah, um, exactly. You're totally fine with a couple of holes. Yes. So what is your fa- uh, favorite youth hockey memory? Um. Oh man, I have a few and they're all from high school. Um, 
because our I had some really good friends on my high school hockey team. I think that happens to a lot of people. Hockey is one of those mm-hmm. sports where everybody ends up being your best friend at the end of the season. Yep. Um, but we, it, it's all like music related because we were singing like songs off by heart, like during warm up, skating around the ice, and you know, just interestingly timed. Uh, song parts when our coach came <laughs> in the locker room because of course we had two uh, male coaches and yeah. we were a locker room full of girls getting a little bit stupid as high school girls do and yeah he walked in at some interesting times where we we're like yeah glad you're not our teachers <laughs> and you're just a coach <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so what is uh the best chirp you've heard on the ice in the locker room directed at you not at you <laughs> get a lot directed at me um, <laughs> we've got some some guys I played with some guys who have some really really great chirp games um the favorite one I've ever heard is someone was you know wearing a bubble and another person yelled at him roll down your window I can't hear you and uh <laughs> and I thought that was really funny that one kind of stuck with me yeah that 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 is a good one uh <laughs> what is the worst post-game beer you've had Ooh, anything warm, anything warm. I don't think I've had, I, I don't meet many beers that I don't like. Yep. Um, and all the light beers that people bring to the rink are, they all taste the same for the most part. So if it's warm though, if that just came out of your hockey bag from last week, that's probably going to be the beer I don't want. Yep. That that's my answer too. I, I <laughs> can't argue that one. When you tape your sick, do you go heel the toe or toe to heel? Heel to toe every single time. All right. I, I, I don't know any psychopaths that go toe to heel. I, I see it more with forwards than I do goalies, but I know a few, I've talked to a few goalies that go toe to heel. I was talking to Connor, Bro, uh, Connor Beaupre, Don Beaupre's son, and he's also the uh, wild e-bug. And uh, he goes toe to heel, but he explained that he finds the puck comes off the blade better with less friction because he likes to play the puck a lot. Uh, oh, okay. Something I can't do, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Me uh, either. Barely playing out. Can I get the puck off my stick well? So <laughs> yeah. So uh, he he had a whole reasoning to it, which was interesting. And I said, I'm going to take your word for it because I it's not going to impact my game. Yeah. Um, I imagine if I could if I could feel that at any point, I'd probably make the change too. But I don't know yep. that I'm ever going to get to that point. Yeah. What is your uh, favorite number to wear, and why? Oh, number 17. Um, for no real reason. I am not a superstitious person by any means. I think it was a number that kind of ended up in my lap at some point and then you play with it for a season and then it's kind of your number from there on out. So now that's, you know, the number on my helmet, the number I wear. And then in net, who's to say that hasn't happened yet. When I get on a team, I'll get to pick a goalie number and that'll be, that'll be exciting. As a Sabres fan, you'll appreciate that. I like to wear number 39, uh, in part because of Dominic Hasek. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that it was 35 for the, until I got to college, but in college 35 was already taken. I went to the, mm-hmm. the cabinet and the biggest Jersey was 39. I went, okay, me and Hasek share a birthday. I kind of play a little bit like them and that's very mm-hmm. unorthodox. That's my number now. And since Perfect. then, that's my number. It's <laughs> um, a good fit. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, when I first started following the Hawks, he was the backup to Eddie Belfour. So yeah, it, it works. It's not bad. Yeah, um, I think I haven't, ru- I've run into just recently, um, you know, somebody else on the team having that number already and I just swap it around. So now I'm 71 and 17, depending on. That works. I'm that works. Um, what advice do you have for young goalies or goalies like yourself picking it up later on? Ooh, ask for help. I think young or old, ask for help. If you don't know how to do, if you watch a goalie do something cool and you want to learn how to do that, ask them, don't be shy and ask people to give you feedback too. Cause you know, a lot of people aren't going to just tell you things. Um, they're going to wait for you to ask them. So I think that's where I need to grow more too is, is asking for help. And I think that's the only way you're going to get better is asking people that are better than you to help you out. Absolutely. And that that's true. I think in anything you do in life, it's okay to ask Mm -hmm. somebody, Hey, I need help here. Uh, Can you help me? If, if, if they, they have the skill or know how don't be Mm -hmm. afraid. Yeah. And don't be jealous. Like 
yeah there's always going to be someone out there better than you so if you like i said if you watch someone make a sweet play that you want to you want to try to make go ask them how they learned to do it or or what went through their head when they did it or you know ask them questions and and figure that out be humble I, i would say i was very fortunate when i was in college we had a good stable of goalies where we were okay asking each other like hey how did you do that uh can you show me that and hey we had the ice time to, you yeah. know, work one-on-one together because we had our own rink and we were the only ones that use it, you know, the men's and women's teams. Um, but we, we had some good goaltenders there. Uh, Dave Rogalski, who's now the devil's goalie coach was mm-hmm. on the team. Uh, Ryan S who runs a successful goalie camp here in the twin cities was on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had some good goalie minds, uh, Apparently our minds just weren't as good as, or, or our bodies and skills weren't as good as our minds. Yeah, that happens, that happens, especially yeah. as you get older. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the, like there's aches I have today. It's like, why do I have a bruise over here when I didn't do anything? Uh, yeah, I don't remember anything touching me in this part of my body, yeah. but for some I, reason. I haven't skated in three weeks, but I just woke up with the bruise here. What's the deal? <laughs> So aging. Fun. <laughs> aging is fun. So where can folks find you on social media if they're looking for you? Um, really just Trish Dangle on Twitter. I use Instagram to post pictures of my dog. Nobody needs to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm around the, the Beer League Players Association Facebook page. If you start chirping women in hockey, I'll be right there in the comment section ready to, to get on you about it. Yeah. <laughs> As well is it's needed that's for sure yeah. <laughs> um because you know if i'm honest when i first started you know encountering uh women hockey players that pick up hockey and stuff um in fact there there was a i remember the day at jenny's ice house one of the women's olympic players from the 98 team was out there skating with us mm-hmm. and she had amazing hands she could skate around anybody on the ice but when she would shoot it was like a squirt shooting at me but yeah. that was women's hockey back then. And now some of these uh, ladies I skate with, it's like, <laughs> I, I want them on my team if it's yep. pickup hockey as opposed to the other. I don't want them shooting on me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's come so far in such a short amount of time. It's, it's fun to see and fun to watch. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. And I, I think people are starting to pick up on that. I mean, we saw that in the uh, all-star game three on three competition in St. Louis, people were glued to their TVs. And then we got some uh, of the uh, Iceable Cup on network TV, which was great. So hopefully we see more of it because we all just want to watch more hockey. I don't care who it is. If it's good hockey, we're going to watch it. Exactly. Watch more and play more. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know, and we want to play more because we want to have parking lot beers. That's really the the end game is always the parking lot beer. (laughs) Yeah, in fact, I, I've talked about it on the podcast, the one group I skate with for the love of puck, like, that's one of the things, like, you come skate with us, part of the skate fee is to pay for the case of beer for after the skate, so we stand mm-hmm. outside and just uh, talk hockey, life, whatever, whatever's going on, we'll talk about it, and it, that, oh, yeah. those are skates I, I look forward to for that reason, uh, Absolutely. because it's good people. Um, it well, is. Trish, I appreciate you taking time out to uh, talk hockey, talk some BLPA and pick on Nick a little bit. Uh, (laughs) We were very nice, very kind to him. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, we could have uh, gone deeper and picked on him more and talked about his time in the Facebook pokey, but uh, (laughs) he's also also the leader of the BLPA. so we, we, we got to be nice to him. We, we don't want to yeah. upset him. <laughs> got to throw him a bone every once in a while. <laughs> yes. Uh, so th- yeah, we'll, we'll see what he comes back at us with. You know, I, I, I would get him on, but only playing goalie once. It doesn't really count as being a goalie. <laughs> Having his cool set of goalie pads doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> but, but he did uh, step up when that uh, one kid, his stuff was lost by UPS and yes. stepped up and got people to... Uh, donate what was in two hours they were able to uh get the the set replaced and yeah and that he actually he just got it very recently yeah that, know, so that, that was great i loved the one comics came walking out of the uh, locker room with only one mm-hmm. skate on and somebody said couldn't we have raised a few more to buy him a left skate <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see it but that's the first thing i thought of too i was like oh come on what's happening <laughs> yeah I, I was telling nick i felt bad because i didn't see the post until after the money was already raised i was 
I would have, you know, definitely donated some money, but it was like, all right, we've already raised enough money and the order's in. I was like, yeah, blink and you miss it, honestly. And Shannon Sabados uh, stepped in to say, to say a few yep. words there too, which was really awesome. And just, you know, yeah. and, you she's know, in there is, is really cool. I was a little bugged that some people were going, oh, well, you know, get, kids playing travel hockey and you know he's already had his own custom set you know the families are obviously got the money and it was like you're missing the point mm -hmm. like this kid you know we don't know he may have even been the one that saved up for it to pay for it himself. right we and don't you don't know. know how tight the funds were to get him to play that travel Ex team for this exactly season. and it's like you know whether they had the opportunity to do it or not something happened ups mm -hmm. lost it they weren't going to help out for whatever reason and the beer league community just said hey you know a couple bucks here and there for everybody and we're gonna make this kid's day and uh yeah you know and i, I think the ten dollars you'd throw towards a case for your next game yeah is ten dollars you can throw towards that and i think that's probably what most people were thinking yeah. well now, now he's got the blpa logo on his pad and, you <laughs> yeah know, he, he's probably more excited to play beer league now as he gets older yeah, future beer leaguer. We all, yeah. all of them are future beer leaguers. <laughs> yeah, that group I was talking about, For the Love of Puck, they've started mm -hmm. a uh, couple pickup skates for kids here in the Twin Cities and a uh, summer league, and it's called the Root Beer League. <laughs> <gasps> That's so fun. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, like all right. Yeah, so it's like, all right, well, well done, Kaz. I, I like that you're uh, <laughs> sticking with it, but understanding the kid, kids aren't going to be. Uh, <laughs> responding to beer league stuff so that he's got the root beer league going because he's got a boy that's in high school so it's just an mm -hmm. opportunity for him to get his kid kid and his uh kids buddies out there skating with uh, some new people and you know enjoy mm -hmm. the game we do where it, it takes a little bit of that pressure of competitive hockey off of them but still have games going so that's cool. yeah that's but, such a good idea yeah well i have taken up uh a little more than an hour. Uh, so again, thank you. I appreciate you taking time out of your evening. Uh, and uh, I'm glad we got a chance to talk. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. That was fun talking to Trish and picking on Nick a little bit. If you haven't given the BLPA Big Show podcast a listen yet, give it a shot. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Be sure to follow Trish on Twitter at Trish Dangle all one word, and follow the BLPA community online simply by searching BLPA on pretty much any platform these days. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube simply by searching for Wash Up Goalie, and I'll pop up. Visit washupgoalie.com for some great hockey-related content, my beer league hockey video highlights when I'm able to find a fill-in skate during this pandemic, and of course, all podcast episodes. If you want some Wash Up Goalie or Tendy Talk apparel, be sure to visit my Threadless shop by clicking the merchandise link on my website. I recently revamped the shop, adding some new items as well as some goalie silhouetted inspired pieces. So I already said, go listen to the BLPA Big Show. It's the OG BLPA Podcast Network show. The BLPA Big Show is a couple of beer leaguers chatting about beer league hockey, draft experience shenanigans, and exploits from around the game. The show is hosted by Nick Jones and today's guest, Trish Dangle, with other co-hosts filling in from time to time as well. With the BLPA in the middle of draft experience season, episodes are bound to have stories from the latest tournaments and information about upcoming ones as well. I need to thank the band The Zambonis for allowing me to use their music on my podcast. You can download their music on iTunes or listen wherever you stream music from. I'm working on lining up other goalies to talk to as well. If you are a goalie or have connections to a goalie who I should talk to, shoot me an email at washedupgoalie39 at gmail.com or shoot me a DM on social media like other goalies have done. Let's not forget, if you are a brand who wants to sponsor the show, be sure to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk. And finally, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment on the podcast platform you're listening on. It's a quick action on your part that helps others find Tendy Talk. Until next time, keep your stick on the ice and your body square to the puck.